On our broadcast tonight, one by one, the miners trapped for two months are brought to freedom in a rescue mission the whole world is watching. While on the surface, the tears and cheers and joyful reunions. Again and again and again. Prayers answered. It all began shortly after midnight local time as a rescue engineer strapped into the 26 inch wide escape capsule named Phoenix 2 and then began the still unproven man trip below. 2,040 feet down a shaft through some of the hardest rock on earth. 17 minutes, 22 seconds later, first contact. It worked on the way down, and soon, as a billion viewers around the world watched the image like a transmission from the moon, 31-year-old Florenzio Avalos would prove with this first trip to the surface, the capsule worked both ways. At 11 minutes after midnight, as Florenzio was the first to end this 70-day crisis, his son, 7-year-old Byron, touched everyone's hearts. Up next, 39-year-old Mario Sepulveda. When he cleared the escape pod, his celebration thrilled a nation. He surprised Chile's president and rescuers with souvenirs, pieces of rock from the cave-in. His energy belying a man trapped in a mine for more than two months. They now call him Super Mario. He hugged and kissed just about everyone. And then said of his ordeal, I met God, I met the devil, God won. No one has needed a stretcher, in fact, all the miners look remarkably fit. Still, paramedics use one into the triage area, where the survivor's first request is met, a hot shower. The one miner whose love life played out while he was down came up late this afternoon. Yoni Barrios was met not by his wife today, but by his mistress. The two women discovered each other when this crisis began. And the headlines around the world reflect the breathless reaction to the drama playing out on TV screens everywhere. Never before has mankind ever retrieved any living person from this death. Gosh. In Australia, miners who themselves had once survived being trapped in the depths were moved by the rescue of these miners, though worried too. It's all going to take the toll in the end of the day. But mostly, from the rescue of the first miner, there's been wonder at so extraordinary an outcome. Even journalists on the scene, including our colleagues, deeply affected. My heart was pounding. I was crying. I looked around me. Every single reporter, every single person in that crowd, grown men in tears. President Obama spoke for many. This rescue is a tribute not only to the determination of the rescue workers and the Chilean government, but also the unity and resolve of the Chilean people. Logic said the miners would have perished. The human spirit said otherwise. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.